and welcome to Latching Onto Trends and Elliott Wave Solution. Today, we're going to talk about trends. Why are we going to do that? Because the markets have been trending beautifully. So we're going to start with some theory and some exam case study in the, about the markets. And then we're going to move on to live market analysis. Your pre presenters for today are myself, Jody Samuels, and Juan Maldonado. First, I want to thank FX Street for inviting us here to speak. The education that they provide their traders and readers is just phenomenal. So we're very glad to have you here and thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedules for being here. I've been trading for over 30 years, starting with the New York Investment Bank trading currencies. My passion is Elliott Wave Analysis, as you will see. Juan Maldonado and I work together at fxtradersedge.com. Juan is a very gifted Elliott Wave strategist, and you will see that once he does the analysis on three currency pairs after I do my piece. Please stick around until the end, because at the end, I'm going to introduce our flagship program to you and give you some special deals. Let's get started. Please read the disclaimer to yourselves. Thank you. Today, the after talking about trends using Elliott Wave lenses, Juan will provide wave counts on the Euro, the Dollar CAD, and the Aussie. Let's just start by a quick overview of what we deem to be the three pillars of trading success, analysis, strategy, and coaching and accountability. We truly believe that without one of the three, it's very possible that a trader will not meet their, their goals and objectives, which is to make money. And every trader sets goals for himself or herself to progress as a trader. And that might be to initially start out with just yeah, the win-loss ratio, getting more than 50% of the trades right. Then it might grow into expanding on the size of the win or reducing the size of the stop. There are things that we need to work on as traders as we get more and more experienced to improve our results. Let's start out by talking about the analysis. We always like to do a top-down approach, and you will see that when we get to the analysis portion of this webinar, a top-down approach to get the market context, to see the big picture, and to think about possible future scenarios so that our mind is prepared to take advantage of the trades that arise. Our mindset is key here. As traders, we can play with our mind. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So by developing the right mindset and thinking about the market, reading some fundamentals on the FX Street site, and then getting prepared for the market, that puts us in a better position, in a position ahead of most traders out there. Without this preparation, without this analysis, and whether it's Elliott Wave analysis, fundamental analysis, and we use a combination of both, we're not really prepared for the trading day. So in our system, we use Elliott Wave analysis in order to have this big picture market context. Strategy is next. This is the second pillar to reaching success. And the strategy needs to be highly effective and, and rules-based, quite frankly. Now, sometimes when a trader, well, when a trader gets more experienced, intuition is involved. But at the beginning, for sure, and even throughout the trader's career, we need to be rule-based and disciplined. So that means that the strategy needs to incorporate the different market cycles. When we're in trends, it has to be a trend strategy. When we're pausing for the trend, it has to be a strategy to get ready for the next trend. And then when we're finding the end of the trend, it's, it's a different strategy. So that's what we have. We have different strategies. We have actually six different strategies using the wavy tunnel. Four are trend-based and two are end of trend-based. And our students, get to get to know them and decide 
depending on their trading personality and preferences, which strategy to latch onto. And today we're talking about trends. So we have four of those strategies and I'm gonna be talking, talking about trends in general shortly. Removing the emotions is key. That's why we have a system and a strategy to pull the trigger and not second guess ourselves. The third pillar is coaching and accountability. Coaching is an expert to evaluate your trades and give you feedback. And sometimes coaching can be in the form of a trading community, which is what we have as well, where you can post your trades and other like-minded traders can provide feedback and say, well, I'm seeing that too, and this is my trade plan. It's really important to have a trading buddy or a trading community because trading can be a lonely business, as I'm sure you, you know. Certainly for me, trading for 30 years, it, it for a period of time, I can remember when it was very, very lonely. And that's when I decided to um, start to get my community together of like-minded traders. And that's what we have today. Accountability is key. It's just key to share your trades with, plan your goals, and receive feedback. So that's something I would strongly recommend. Let's just spend a little bit more time on the analysis. Ralph Nelson Elliott studied various market indices over a 75 year period in the 1930s. While he was bedridden, he poured over thousands of stock market data when there were no computers. And he discovered that the stock markets traded in repetitive cycles. And that these cycles, or what he called waves, reflected the emotions of investors. And this is what came about from his research, the eight-wave cycle to the left. This is called the wave principle. Now it's called the Elliott wave principle. And to the right, we have crowd behavior, which impacts the market. And to the left, we have the result of that crowd behavior. So when the market is very enthusiastic about a move, a market, let's say, and the news supports that, the fundamentals support it, we get the trend move, which is the five wave uptrend move on the left of this picture. And then the market corrects. The market corrects. This is the correction cycle. So this is the trend cycle and this is the correction cycle. All of this is based on the Fibonacci sequence. These are all numbers from the Fibonacci sequence. One, two, five, eight, 13, 21. You can see that these are all numbers in the, from the Fibonacci sequence. And what do they mean in this context of the eight wave cycle? Well, the wave can be one wave or one, two waves. We have five waves up. When we count the waves within the five waves up, so the sub waves, we get 21 waves. And then when we count the sub waves within the 21 waves, we get 89 waves. And when we add these numbers up with the corrective cycle, we get two waves, eight waves, so five and three, and then 34 waves, which is 21 plus 13, and then 144. So this is all based on Fibonacci. And in fact, the universe is based on Fibonacci and the, the uh, building proportions, body proportions, everything, you'll notice the, relate, the ratios, the sequence, you will find in nature. So that is the eight-wave cycle. And another key, very important, is that the market is, that nature is fractal and so is the market. So fractal means self-similar patterns composed of smaller copies of themselves ad infinitum. That means forever. And the repetition occurs in nature, in cl the clouds of the sky, to the branches of the tree, to even fractal images, where if you take a portion of that image, a smaller portion, and then magnify it, you find a new image with the same structure. That's a fractal image. So you can see the fractals, the smaller getting bigger, but everything is the same. And this is all based on Fibonacci. Here's another fractal image. They're generated using Fibonacci formulas. What that means is, from the market perspective, 
once you train yourself to see the patterns, you'll see them being repeated in any market and any time frame like this. This is, we have nine different screenshots on the screen. And we have nine different markets, daily, weekly, 15 minute, two hour, four hour. We have gold, dollar, yen, Aussie, Euro, Canada. We have different markets, different time frames, yet the patterns are the same. So that is our goal to learn the patterns, see the patterns, trigger the trades and pocket the profit. And once you internalize the ideal Elliott Wave setups, you will take the ideal end of trend trades and the ideal trend continuation trades. It's really that simple. And if you have a great Elliott Wave analyst by your side to give you the context, some people don't choose not to become analysts and that's fine, they just wanna trade. Then, and that's my story. I can count waves, but I prefer just not to and to trade. <clears throat> so Juan is an excellent wave counter. He loves to do it, and he's a great trader too. So if you have uh, somebody like Juan beside you giving you the wave counts, then that's your context. And what your job is to find the patterns and trigger the trade based on the strategy, your chosen strategy. <clears throat> Let's just take a step back, back now and talk quickly about, excuse me, <clears throat> trending versus sideways markets. It, there are three things that a currency pair can do, go up, go down, or go sideways. And when it goes sideways, the key is not to get beaten up during those sideways markets and to prepare rather for the move in the next direction. So let's talk about some tips and some tricks here. We like to do a top-down approach. So we actually look at three different time frames. And let's just assume that this red long-term is a daily, then that the green is a four hour, and that the dotted, blue dotted or gray dotted is a one hour time frame. You can see <clears throat> that the smaller time frames cycle within the bigger time frame. And this is exactly what Elliott Wave Analysis does. So the four hour chart will cycle and within the daily and the hourly chart will cycle within the four hour. So no matter what time frame you're trading, you wanna make sure that you're with the trend and that you're buying on the dips if it's an uptrend or you're selling on the rallies if it's a downtrend. And that's where your the Elliott Wave Analysis in combination with your strategy comes in handy. It tells you where, where and when to pull the trigger and, and, um, and you have this as your market context. So keep this picture in mind. Now we're gonna go to another slide and we're gonna show you the thinking behind the end of the trend move. So now we're just in one time frame. We're moving down. This is a downtrend. And the definition of a downtrending market is lower lows and lower highs. So we make a new low, and then the market, and we label this point one, and the market moves up. We label that point two, and the late market comes down. And here we're at the juncture, we're at the crossroads we can go get the market can either trade up or down from here and if it trades up then we've just established a new trend in the opposite direction and if it trades down then we make a new low so that's the question isn't it do we buy here with a stop below the low and risk getting stopped out or do we wait for confirmation for us to take out this point two before buying in the new trend. And if you wait for confirmation, then this is called the one, two, three reversal pattern. Now let's look at some markets and let's add some layers to this one, two, three reversal pattern to show, to give us more, more precise 
checklist on the turning points in the market. This is the Australian dollar chart. It's a four hour chart just with price action. And I've drawn trend lines for this uptrend. And let's take a look at this end of the trend. This is the end of the trend. So what is it? What happens at the end of the trend? For one, we have divergence. So when we have divergence, that, that means that the price makes a higher high and the whatever oscillator you're using doesn't. That's called divergence. So that's a sign that the market is running out of steam. You definitely want to see that if you're planning to sell the market when you think it's the end of the trend. Number two, trend line break. This is the trend line and we have a break here. We usually have a retest of the trend line and then we come down again. And then number three is one, two, three reversal pattern. So in this case, we had all three and this is the four hour. You can see the same on a smaller time frame, and perhaps get a better entry. You're getting, you can get in early. You know, some traders do that. That's fine too, but you can certainly get in on this time frame as well. And then we had a nice sideways trend move down. And then this is based on the wave count. This is a corrective sequence. And then we had to move back up again. And the same thing happens here. We have divergence. Now you can see this lovely divergence. And this is obvious divergence. We have a trend line break. And we have a one, two, three reversal pattern. The fourth thing that we see here is the reversal candlestick at the bottom of the market. So it's a nice long tail. If you just draw your trend lines and, look and do this simple analysis, then you will be ahead of the pack in finding trend reversal points. You just see how much time I have. Okay, I have about three more minutes. So let's, let's go quickly through this. this. This is the Canadian dollar. Now at this juncture, we can move up or we can move down. We're in within the channel. Okay, we have divergence, so the market is running out of steam. Let's see what happens. The market moves down. So this is this is our confirmation. We have divergence and we have a trend line break. It's best to wait for that confirmation for the trend line break because once we have the trend line break, it's it just confirms to us that we have a change in trend and we have a one, two, three reverse as well. Let's move to the next slide. And we actually move down further. So when you when you use this, this is a daily chart, you're not getting in at the top, but you're getting a nice move. You're getting a nice move. And then in the opposite direction, the same thing happens. You're drawing your channel lines and you 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 break out. You have a trend line break, divergence, and a one, two, three reversal. This is the personality of the waves. Let's just scroll ahead and let's just get to wave five and then we're gonna continue on with this Canadian dollar example. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Juan. So I have one minute, but let me just tell you that this is the five wave structure and the personality of these waves is as follows. You really don't know where we are at, at wave one and two. This is the juncture that we talked about. So once we take out the top of wave one, that's when wave three starts. And you really want to be in on a wave three move. Okay, that's the strongest, the strongest trend move. You want to be in on that. And with Elite Wave Analysis, you learn all the Fibonacci projection levels, et cetera. Wave fours are usually when traders get chopped up. It can be a you know, com complex correction. And a wave five is the last move. Sometimes we have a double top. <clears throat> an ending diagonal, and sometimes the wave five moves quite a bit. So no five wave sequences are created equal. But let's just go back to this Canadian dollar example, and, that, and now we're gonna add the, the wave counts. So that you can see, once we add the wave counts, it really provides something so, um, so clean with context. We already saw this picture. Let's add the wave counts now. 
Here we go. So we can simply label this wave one, two, three, four, five. And when we have the, the wave counts like this, we know what we're anticipating. We know that this move is a correction. And within the bigger channel, we even have some, some targets within the bigger channel. So I'm just showing you this without a strategy and with just drawing simple trend line analysis and using simple basic techniques. And then when we add harmonics, which is another analysis tool that we use, we get a very refined Fibonacci reversal level here. So that's, and let's just, let's just uh, put all the wave counts on here on the Canadian dollar. And it, once you learn how to read the wave counts, then you can follow the trade. So here we have a label three, four. And I remember when, when we had this and Juan, this is Juan labeled this and was calling for a move higher. And this is what we got. We got a move higher. So when you have the context, it's really, really very, um, it's, it all fits together. So I think we learned a lot today. And now I'm going to pass it over to Juan, who's going to do live analysis on the three markets. And then I'm going to take it back and show you our very, very special offer. Okay, thank you. Hello, traders, and welcome. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, my name is Juan Maldonado. I'm in charge to present the live analysis for the markets. So let's find together some nice trades for the upcoming month and, of course, the upcoming week. When you are starting to understand the market, the best you can do is to start with the weekly chart to understand where the market is, even if you trade on the one-minute chart or the five-minute chart or the hourly chart, it's important to understand the big picture. Elud Wave is a tool that can help us to understand the market, to know where we are and where we can go in the future. On the weekly chart, if you have been following our analysis here uh, in FX Street, on previous webinars, we have been uh, following all the move down. We have been setting targets, we have been suggesting trades at each retracement for the entire move down. We have the confirmation that the previous cycle was complete when the price break out this trend line. That was our confirmation. And also, take a look of the, of the reversal, the one to three reversal. Because one of the problems of the Elliott Wave Theory is that when you are finding the end of a wave, you can't know exactly where it's going to end. We know about Fibonacci retracements, and we know that the wave can retrace 236, 38 percent, uh, 61, 8, 78, 6, 88, 6, or it can invalidate. That's why we need to add to the Elliott Wave Theory a way to validate the end of the move. And by using the one to three reversals, the trend line breakouts, uh, it's it's going to help us to understand that. This is the weekly chart, but can be the one minute chart. It's going to be exactly the same for every time frame. For example, take a look here. The price before make a, a move down. And in that moment, you can ask, ah, is that the end of the B wave? Because you are live and you don't have in that moment the after the fact price action, but the price make a new high. So you cancel the validation. And here comes again, the price makes a new move down. And you are going to ask yourself in that moment, oh, is that the end of the B wave? But the price make a new high. So you cancel that reversal. And here it happened again, the price makes a new move down, but then it makes a new high. So it canceled the reversal. But finally, the price makes a new move down, a leg down, the retracement. And here it breakouts the one to three reversal there is the validation that the B wave ended. So this is the weekly chart. Uh, once you have this confirmation in the weekly, then you have to go to lower time frames and 
day trade, swing trade, or even a scalp. Um, that breakout of the trend line also helped us to understand better the price action. Uh, that trend line was made by connecting the beginning of the move with this major retracement that happened during July 2013. Okay, so that's the context of the market. The forecast that we are having here is that we are inside of a C wave. Uh, the price will, will make that one, two, three, four, five uh, for that C wave uh, in terms of the Fibonacci uh, projection. Uh, we can set a nice target around the 117.13 for the longer term. Uh, the price is getting closer to the 121.49 on the weekly, which will be the first target. But I think that a nice target uh, that we can keep in mind is the 117.13 because that's the Fibonacci extension. Okay, but of course that's going to take a while. So we need to focus in the price action for this cycle. The wave three targets the 161.8, that was the 129.06, the 200%, 127.19, the 261.8, 124.15. Because we don't know exactly where it's going to end. What we need to do is to go to lower time frames and analyze once we have the impact on each target. And then we say, Okay, so here we have the 161.8, then we have some retracements on the daily, on the hourly chart, and depending on the oscillator, we start taking the decision if we want to short again. Let's see the daily chart, because also the Elliott Wave theory is fractal, which means that we have waves inside the waves. And we can label the weekly and then we can label the daily, and then we can label the four-hour chart, and we are going to find the waves inside the waves, which is fantastic because the higher time frame can help us to confirm the lower time frame wave count. And everything needs to, to be like a puzzle where all the parts needs, uh, need to be, um, needs to have stance with the next time frame. Uh, so here we have the daily chart during our last uh, webinar. Uh, we talk about the 261.8, the 124.50 for this wave three. So the price went to the 125.03. Sometimes this is going to happen. This is going to happen to you that the, the price is not going to reach your target. This one went very close, 124.98, and the actual was and the forecast was 124.49 on the daily chart. That is just some, a few pips of distance. But that's why you need to have emergency exits in case that the price doesn't hit your target, then you need to close your trade at the best price possible. Of course, we have techniques to find that out. Um, then the, the wave four came, and now we are in a wave five, the wave five black which means that we are at the last that we are at the last moment of the of the cycle and it can be one of the most difficult because the price is losing momentum and you can easily identify when the trend is getting tired just with price action because look at the slope of this move then we have the retracement and then compare this new move with the with the previous one this one fa this one was faster look at the red candles uh, no overlapping no choppy market but this one is different because it's the way five the retracements are deeper we need to understand that in order to trade even on lower time frames that during the wave three the retracements are going to be just 23 six percent of the previous move uh, 38.2 at the most, but during the wave five, we can have 50% of retracement, 61.8% of retracement. So without having the Elliott wave theory, it's going to be very difficult to know how much of retracement you are going to expect. Because we are on the wave five, um, 
let's see now the four hour chart. We are doing here the top down approach going now to the next time frame. So by using the yellow wave theory, yet with what you, you can do with your strategy is to find, for example, wave trees. That's the easiest the easiest way to trade because you find a wave three, then you wait for the wave four and you short. And here again, because this is an extension, you can learn uh, the Elliott wave theory with, with us, but um, here we have another wave three because it was an extended wave. So what's the strategy? To find the end of this triangle and then to go short again. Because the first step, as Jody was explaining, is to understand the market and to know where the market is going. Then you need a strategy to trigger your trade. That can be something simple, like a breakout of the trend line, or, or it can be something more advanced uh, with the new techniques of the technical analysis to find the trades inside the patterns. And then, once you have the trade, you need to learn how to manage the trade. Do you need to close it before it hits your target? Do you, need, do you need to adjust your stop loss? So you have to, to, to have um, a specific um, trade management rules in order to be successful. It's not just a matter to know where the price is going. Um, so this is a nice triangle. Once we have the breakout of the triangle, we can target the next move. I will suggest to target the 123.58. Uh, also, let's go back to the daily. Uh, yeah, that that uh, level of the 123.60, 123.58 is a nice level to keep in mind. Um, so follow the triangle. Once you, you have the confirmation, if you have a strategy uh, uh, that the triangle has ended, that the wave four is complete, then go short. Or you can use just a trend line. And once you have the breakout, to start taking the shorts. If you are a scalper, if you are a day trader, trading inside of the triangle, it's a challenge. It's difficult. You need skills. You need a lot of skills in order to trade in, inside of a triangle. So if you have the Elliott Wave Theory in your chart, then you can decide if it's a good instrument to scalp to day trade or not. If not, you can go and find other instrument, like the Aussie. From uh, the daily chart perspective, the Aussie has been uh, showing a, a bearish move as well, where we have a wave of one magenta, then we have the wave two magenta that retrace to the 61.8%, that's the golden ratio, the Fibonacci golden ratio. Then after the wave two here, once it breaks out the wave one, we start the wave three. Um, the target for that wave three was the 261.8, 87.14. You can see how well this works because the yellow wave is not going to show you only where the market is going, also is going to show you where is going to end the cycle. Of course, it's not going to be precisely at that level, but it's the zone that we call it the convergence zone when we, miss, we mix it with other techniques that we apply. But anyway, uh, that's the, the zone of reversal. So that's it. If you're trading the Aussie and the price starts reaching those levels, you are going to close your trade because we know that that's going to be it. And without having the yellow wave theory in your chart, it's very difficult to know where the price is going to end the cycle. So here was the 261.8, then it started retracing again as the way four. That's why I think that for traders that are starting in this business, the easiest way to trade is after the wave four, because when you're dealing with a wave two, it's more difficult to find the end of the wave two, to make sure that that is a wave two that is not going to make a new high, for example. But once you have the wave three that has some characteristics in terms of the oscillator, in terms of the slope, there are some rules to identify the wave three. Uh, the and you wait for the wave four and you take advantage of the previous momentum in order to trade the wave five. So that's one of the easiest way to trade with Elliott Wave when you are learning by finding the wave fours. Of course, all of us want to be inside the wave three, but especially when you are learning, it's very difficult to find those waves 
trace. Um, so we are inside of the next wave, the last leg down. There is the wave 5 magenta. On the 4-hour chart, we can see that with more details, uh, the structure that the price is taking to make that wave 5. This first leg, that I'm calling this the wave 1, will uh, give us the, the, first, the first leg, and here is the wave 2. What is the plan? The plan is to analyze, to understand the price action that we are having here in order to find the end of the wave 2 and then to go short. There is something else if you like to trade with harmonics, that also we use harmonics with Elliott Wave, and there is a pattern called the, the BAT that you can keep in mind this pattern because it's going to help us understand better the price action for the wave number two. Uh, so here, the, the BAT goes to the 88.6% of the previous move. So we have here a convergence zone between the 88.31, 88.69. By using harmonics, you can have an additional confirmation. Once the wave two is complete, then you apply your technique to validate the end of the corrective, and you take the, the trade. So you don't uh, have to, to take the trade before, just when you have the harmonic pattern completed, plus the reversal. So this is fantastic by using both techniques. And you can learn all these tools with us. Uh, and finally, we have the dollar cat. The dollar cat is in corrective mode as well. Uh, it ended a wave three and is in a wave four. As you can see, almost all, all the times, these majors are doing exactly the same. Almost all, all of them are in waves four. So for example, if the cycle is too complex, then you can go to, to the crosses and find nice trades. But when the majors are trending, it's better to take these trades here. Um, on the four-hour chart, the price is making a corrective wave that we have it in magenta, the wave. Be a little bit uh, complicated for you if you don't know about the Elliott Wave Theory, but actually it's something very simple. It's just ABC and then ABC, two ABCs. Uh, the target that we set for this wave four is the 112.16. Um, I don't like to trade inside the corrective patterns. Uh, I like more the swing trades, like in, uh, to find the end of the wave four and then take a swing trade. But if you like to day trade and if you like to scalp, then you need to trade inside these corrective patterns. But when you know that you are inside of a corrective pattern, you can lower your risk, you can have uh, some additional techniques to protect your money. Uh, so here we have a wave one, a wave two. Uh, the plan is to find the end of this wave two, then to, to, to start looking for the 112.16, um, especially on the 15 minute chart, one of the ways to find this end of the, of the cycles are by finding the, the reversals. For example, uh, looking on the five minute chart for a clear five wave sequence, and then a retracement, and then we can short below the level. So there are some techniques to find the end of the waves, but remember, never trade just when the price hits a feeble retracement or a support or resistance. That's too risky, always. Even if you use the Elliott Wave Theory or other, other techniques, validate your entry with your strategy. So thank you very much for being here. Now, Jody is going to tell you something else. And if you have any question, please contact us. Thanks, Juan. I am going to show you something really fantastic now. This is, this is a picture of, we have a program called Elliott Wave Ultimate. And Elliott Wave Ultimate is really the ultimate <laughs> in Elliott Wave. And this is a picture that you will understand once we, once you join us in our program, Elliott Wave Ultimate. So I'm not going to go through this picture with you, uh, but this is 
this you will understand where to trigger trades, where to get out, out of your trades, where to set your stop losses, and how far the market will move. What you get in Elliott Wave Ultimate is you get condensed trade plans from all the work that we have done to plan this. Now, this is this is in the work in the makings, this Elliott Wave Ultimate course for many, many years. It's certainly my 30 years of experience in this course and all the other experience from my team members. So this is what you get in a nutshell for six wavy tunnel trade plans and then Elliott Wave Ultimate trade plans once you learn all the material. This course, this program is four courses within one. We have the Elliott Wave series, which is four modules, but nine videos, nine learning objects to really take you through the nitty gritty of the Elliott Wave. And once you learn the modules in the website, we have live webinars to support the modules, to highlight the key points and show you live market examples to illustrate the Elliott Wave, what you're learning. Some of my students have gone through this 30 times. There's that much in there. It's just very, the Elliott Wave series on its own is, is fantastic. It simplifies the Elliott Wave. The Wavy Tunnel Plus is our strategy. There are seven modules there. We do top-down approach. We show you how we use three different time frames. We go through the six different trade plans, the four trend and the two end of trend, very detailed. And then you get the actual trade plans once you understand them. So the Wavy Tunnel Plus is our strategy to you to take advantage of the different market cycles. We have a Fibonacci primer, which is fairly advanced. And then to the icing on the cake is the harmonic patterns. We find that the harmonic patterns provide a precise exit point for our trend trades, and they even get us into the trend. So the combination of Elliott Wave with harmonics is so very powerful. And I think Andre says it very well here. I can't say it better myself. Reveals the order behind the seemingly chaotic market. As a harmonic trader on a daily basis, I get to witness firsthand how the rhythm of the market is in sync with the mysterious Fibonacci order. So thank you very much. And hopefully we will see you in Elliott Wave Ultimate.